So, you've tapped on this video because you want to know all about sensory processing disorder. Let's talk about it. Hey, I'm Will Venus. Welcome back to my autistic YouTube channel. So today, as I just said a moment ago, we're going to talk about sensory processing disorder. Um, I'm going to talk about how it affects autistic people and give you some examples of it. So let's get into it. So for around 80% of autistic people, depending on where you do your research from, I know that I certainly have come into contact with people that are autistic and have sensory processing problems. So with autistic people, we tend to be either over or under sensitive to each of our five senses or six senses if you're that way inclined. So in this video I'm going to be talking about how pro sensory processing disorder affects our five senses. Sensory processing disorder it does affect our, things like our balance and our body awareness but I will be covering that in another video. So firstly let's start off with sound. If you're under sensitive to sound you might not necessarily hear certain noises you might only hear in one ear poetry you might not be able to identify certain noises or let's say if you are in a crowd all you'll be able to hear about is the crowd and not the person or all you can focus on is the heavy intensity of a gathering of people um, you might not be able to acknowledge what certain sounds are or identify I should say but you may also enjoy the experience of a crowded place and the mania of a lot of people together I don't no thanks. Now, when you're oversensitive to noise, <laughs> me, I'm definitely oversensitive to noise. Uh, if, for instance, yeah, as I'm recording this video, if I hear any noise around me, I'm instantly distracted because I can't focus. Because all I need to focus on now is my speech and looking into the camera as I'm talking to you guys. And if I hear a noise like an animal or a, a door slamming or a person raising their voice, I have neighbours. Uh, I can't focus so my attention is just instantly taken elsewhere I'm distracted and so I'm unable to concentrate on the job in hand that I'm trying to do or with sounds it could be like a passing ambulance or police car fire brigade and or train even those noises are really piercing to my ears and not in the earring sense and so when that happens I just have to go like that or cover my ears uh, yeah there's lots of things when it comes to sensory overload and sound with me. Now the next sensory touch. I am very sensitive to touch whereas my husband is the complete polar opposite and um, he doesn't tend to feel touch in the same way as I do. For instance if he's had a, a really stressful day at work or whatever or he needs to relax and I want to you know massage his shoulder or his neck or his head or his temples or whatever else. I've really got to use all my strength because he just doesn't feel massage in the same way as I do. So if he tries to give me a massage, all it takes is the slightest touch and it's quite painful for me. So there, I've kind of muddled it up there. I've gone on tangents, one of my lovely autistic traits. But um, I'll cover some now some of the undersensitive symptoms of sensory processing disorder when it comes to touch. So, as I've just said, people might not necessarily feel a slight touch on their skin. Um, they can have a particularly high pain threshold. I wish that was me. I have got a very, very low tolerance when it comes to pain. And uh, some people that are undersensitive to touch may feel the benefit of a weighted blanket because you feel the weight of it and it's not too heavy for them. As I, also, as I'm telling you these examples, these are merely just a few examples. They are very far and wide with the variation. And also, if you're autistic or you know someone that's autistic, or even if you're not on the spectrum, comment below what your sensory things are like. I'm always fascinated to read this kind of thing. And I'm nosy as well. I'm very nosy. Now, if you're oversensitive to touch, um, this is like a prime example for me. Clothing. Uh, I cannot tolerate tight clothing of any sort or description. I have to wear nice, loose, light clothing, uh, clothing that's going to let my skin breathe, because if my skin doesn't breathe, I start to sweat, and that is just absolutely unbearable for me. 
and it's also quite specific for um, each body part as well, especially your extremities. Um, I don't like having anything on my hands other than my wedding ring. Uh, I don't like wearing gloves. I don't like the feeling of heavy emollients or ointments on my hands. It makes me feel deeply uncomfortable. But conversely, some people do like that feeling. Uh, also, some people have a particularly sensitive scalp. Me, uh, I've got very sensitive scalp. I do not like anyone other than myself touching my scalp. It is deeply sensitive. And when I feel someone even touching my hair, it's unbearable. Uh, that's why I tend to keep my hair up quite a lot. I don't like it on my face because it starts to irritate me. I like having long hair, I like to, to care for it and everything. I like the freedom of being able to style it however I want. Also the freedom just to tie it up when I can't be bothered doing my hair because my hair is down to there. I love my hair but I don't like anyone else touching it. You can admire it, just do not touch it. And if I've not wash my hair for more than two days my scalp is it's that sensitive it's painful when uh, for instance if i'm outside and the wind blows my hair the wind is painful to my scalp now getting on to taste so if you're under sensitive to taste you might particularly enjoy really spicy food or foods that are very rich foods that are very full of flavor probably won't be particularly fond of what i call beige food, so food that's particularly tasteless and bland and perhaps colourless. And also some people like to put um, things in their mouth that aren't necessarily food, so things like whatever they feel that they, that they like the texture of, so things like glass or yeah, anything that's non-edible or non-food and someone likes the particular taste and texture of it. And sometimes that includes things like solid human waste and that's known as pika. So I would say that my taste, uh, my taste buds definitely err on the side of undersensitive because I like very rich food, I like spicy food, I like food with lots of different texture, colours, flavours, aromas, we'll get onto aroma in just a moment. So I'm definitely undersensitive but Conversely, my husband is extremely oversensitive when it comes to food, so he has an extremely limited diet. He doesn't like the textures of quite a lot of food. Uh, but we're working our way around that because he wants to fix that, because he wants a more healthy and balanced diet, because he wants to work on that. The next sense, sight, the things that we use these for, if you're fortunate to have eyesight. Uh, not everyone does have the pleasure and privilege of eyesight. So if you are someone that has under sensitivity to sight, I actually do this. Like if I'm looking at a, a particular thing, uh, let's say I'm looking at this mirror, which has my name on it. Um, this, this thing right in the middle in my direct vision, it's extremely sharp. Whereas everything around me is very blurred. I, I, I just can't see anything other than what I'm focusing on. And also I'm very bad at catching things or gauging my space around things. So like if I'm going to place, say, a, a makeup thing, if I'm going to place it on a shelf or a table, I may, might not be able to gauge the distance where I'm meant to put this thing down. And then what happens? It ends up falling on the floor and smashing or whatever. But that's okay. It's only makeup. It can be easily replaced. Um, so yeah, I do tend to be quite clumsy. Again, getting back to my partnership with my husband, he is very oversensitive to things like light. He absolutely loves a dimly lit room or a darkened room completely even. I like lots of natural daylight flowing through. I like to have the, the light on as I'm working. Well, I need to because I do close at work. Uh, I tend to not like a darkened room because in my experience and my opinion, a darkened room tends to really lower my mood and so I like to keep things nice and light and bright and breezy and yeah it lifts my mood whereas if I have it very dark it affects me deeply but also on the other hand when I go to sleep my room has to be completely dark so I find that juxtaposition quite interesting don't you 
Also, if you find any of this interesting, I would love to know. And if you like, you can subscribe to this channel anytime you like. It's absolutely free, of course. I'm trying to create a community on here. So, you know, like, share, comment, all that good stuff. I'll probably ask you that at the end of this video, but just dropping it in right now. Okay, now getting on to my... F I would say my favourite sense, and that is sense of smell. Uh, I call it my superpower because, well actually I'll get on to why that is in just a moment, but I have a very, very acute sense of smell. It's kind of natural that if you're undersensitive to smell, you won't be able to smell certain things, if at all, and you'll not be able to always smell, really, to, to smell quite extreme things, like, uh, for instance, my husband doesn't recognise when the cat goes to use a litter tray, but I smell it probably before the cat squeezed it out, uh, whereas he can't smell it, and I'm like, how can you not smell that? And it's just because he's very undersensitive when it comes to smell. With certain things, uh, also very interesting. Also, if you want to see both of us on camera to talk about our experiences as an autistic couple, do let me know. Uh, my husband's quite keen for that, and if you are, uh, yeah, we'll do that for you. And if you're undersensitive to think, to, to what is wrong with me today? If you're undersensitive to smell, you might not necessarily smell your own body odour and recognise that you need to wash. Now, when you're someone that's very oversensitive to smells, me. Uh, smell, for me, it really can go either way. There's no happy medium. I either love it or hate it. Uh, so if I walk into a building, a house, a room, whatever, and it smells very foreign or very undesirable, shall we say, that will make me feel deeply uncomfortable and I will just want to get out of wherever it is that I am into my comfortable place where I can smell things that are pleasant and that make me happy and that lift my mood and that keep me calm and sane. So that has me kind of covered a few of, uh, like a few examples of all the five senses. Uh, I suppose if you have a sixth, sixth, I can't, that's what I struggle to say. If you have a sixth sense, uh, if you do have a sixth sense, let me know. Uh, yeah, that would be very interesting. I want to know who you are. I want to know what you're all about. Yeah, I find that fascinating. Um, so I thought to round this video off, I would share some things with you that really helped for me. If you really struggle with sensory processing disorder, or you know someone that struggles with sensory processing disorder, and you're not quite sure how to go about striking up that conversation of, you know, what's it all about? How does that feel for you? Again, just my opinion. I'm not a professional or whatever. I'm just someone that is an autistic individual. But if someone came to me and asked me, you know, would you, could you talk me through your experience with sensitive processing disorder? I would welcome that. Um, you know, it's, it's nothing to be embarrassed about. You are you. You're beautiful in whatever form that comes in. So yeah, just have an adult conversation about it. If you're someone that struggles with different textures and flavours of food. Again, I'm not a dietitian or a doctor or GP, and if you're worried about your nutrition, go to your doctor, GP, physician, whoever it is you see. Um, my advice should not be an alternative for sound medical advice, yeah. The things that have worked for my husband that has a problem with things like taste and texture, introduce it slowly into the diet. I find that if, if say, you're someone that struggles with texture, with things like fruit and vegetables, and you want to get that nutrition, make soup, you know, put a lot of different vegetables in a pot, boil them up in your stock and or how, however it is you make soup, and just blitz it until it's smooth if you really struggle with chunky bits of food. And my husband's main concern was that these things are gonna get stuck in his throat, whereas if you pure, puree soup, you're gonna get all that gorgeous nutrition and you're not gonna be sick because you can tolerate that texture, so there is that. Um, my husband struggles with toothpaste. Uh, he cannot, I cannot eat a polo mint or anything that's mint related in the same house as him. And so he has to have flavourless toothpaste. And if I can find it, I will put the link below if you're someone that struggles with the really intense mint flavour. I don't, I quite like mint, uh, but I cannot tolerate peppermint. So. For me, peppermint is, is quite a burning sensation 
for that particular mint. So I use the softer mint, which is spearmint. So I get my spearmint toothpaste and spearmint mouthwash. You know, it's all about trial and error to see what works for you. When it comes to clothing, uh, if you know someone or you're this person, uh, if there is some item of clothing that's making you feel deeply uncomfortable, just don't wear it. You don't have to conform to what society sees as fashionable or on trend. Wear whatever makes you feel comfortable, yeah? Because if you're going to wear something that makes you feel more comfortable, you're going to have a lot more positive life experience. I've found that since I stopped wearing things like jeans and things that really cling to my body, I, I'm really relaxed. I'm really zen. And if people say to me, you're not quite dressed appropriately, I'll say, for who? Your benefit? How exactly does me... I mean, unless you're in a work environment, that's slightly different. But if you're going to see friends or family or if you're going to a party or whatever, wear what you want. If someone else doesn't like it, that is their problem to deal with. It's not yours. Again, the problem is the world around us. It's not us, yeah? That doesn't need fixed. And if you're someone that is feeling really uncomfortable with your work uniform, just talk with your employer. See if you can come to some arrangement where you can wear clothes that, one, that fit their idea of what uniform is, and, well, more importantly, or secondly, depending on where your priorities lie, you can come to an agreement to maybe wear in a slightly different version of the work uniform, which is called a reasonable adjustment, and I would say that that's definitely a reasonable adjustment. So if your line manager isn't working, talk to HR and... Yeah, just just have an open conversation. Yeah, it's the only way that we can discuss things in an open and frank and healthy manner. If you're someone that really struggles with the smell of deodorants and perfumes, you can get deodorants and perfumes that come that are that don't have any scents. Me, getting onto the superpower now. I love smells. I love smells. I love all different kinds of smells. And I use my sense of smell as an anchor. So, for instance, let me see if I can find something that has a really nice smell. One moment, I will be back in a second. Now, getting back to the anchoring and using your sense of smell to anchor. Anchoring is a great way to really reduce anxiety. And so I use the sense of smell to anchor myself. So this this isn't sponsored in any way shape or form i'm just using this as an example this is a perfume oil and it's all natural oils i'll leave a link below if you want to buy it and this has got a nice fruity smoky woody earthy scent to it and that's my favorite things and so oh i wish you could smell this is absolutely delicious honestly so before i go out i'll smell this pop the lid on or just put a slight roll on my wrist. Because I relate this to things like safety, calm, comfort, feeling quite cradled, when I'm out and I feel really anxious and I just want to shut off all of the sensory things around me, and I don't care if anyone's looking, because um, it's nothing illegal, I'll just take this out, close my eyes, smell it, pop it back in my bag or pocket, and then I can connect that with things like safety and comfort and calm and healing. And it really, really reduces my anxiety because my sense of smell is my strongest sense. Uh, that kind of cancels out all the, the sensory mania that's going on around me. And that's how I use use it for anchoring. Or if I'm, if I want to have a break, if I'm, like if I'm working at home or doing something else and I just feel like I need to take a moment to really breathe and connect with the here and now. I'll just smell my wrist and it brings a sense of zen. And so you could probably do that as well if you uh, have a look with each of your other senses. So if you'd like looking at bright colours for instance, so do I, you could look at a nice colour chart or what I do is I look at a nice colourful makeup palette. Um, if you like particular sounds, you can listen to your favourite music and just really get lost 
in whoever is singing or the instruments and the chords and the different stems of music. Yes, that has been my video about sensory processing disorder. I hope that has been useful to you. I hope it's been informative. I've tried to keep it quite casual as I like to do because it, it's a nice relaxed casual channel here. So if you have found that useful, a great big thumbs up. That would be amazing because it helps small channels to grow. If you want to help me grow and you're new here, subscribe. Comment below what you've thought of this video if you have anything else to say. Again, I did say I wouldn't be covering absolutely everything, but um, I hope I've covered as much as you would need me to. And if there's any other suggestions that you have for future videos, I'm very willing to take those on board. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. I will see you next week. And thank you so much for spending so much of your time here. Yeah, I really do appreciate it. So take care. Keep being you. Keep shining. And I'll see you next week, hopefully. Take care. Bye.